What is up, Sopranos fans? Kino here, and I am back with another Soprano log. Today, we are looking at the season four finale, White Caps. One of the best episodes, not only of The Sopranos, uh, but just television history. And I am so excited to review it with you guys. Real quick before we get started, I have an announcement to make. And don't worry, this isn't the usual begging for money that I do at the end of each season. Although if you do want to support the channel, you can go to my Patreon link below. No, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is that unfortunately, The Many Saints of Newark has been delayed again. It's now coming out on Friday, October 1st, one week later than we were thinking. It sucks that this movie has been delayed again for a third time, especially since I'm so looking forward to reviewing it with you guys. But I do have some good news that will hopefully lighten the blow. I have something special planned for September. Now, the final season of The Sopranos has 21 episodes. So in order to lead into the movie, I'm going to do a new Soprano log every single day in September. I'm going to start with the first episode members only on September 1st and end with the series finale Made in America on September 21st. When the movie was coming out on September 24th, this was going to lead into things perfectly, but it just gives you a little bit of time to watch any of the Soprano logs that you might have missed um, and get hyped for the movie. I'm calling this idea Soprano's Timber, uh, so make sure you guys share that on social media. I need to go viral with this. But I thought this would be a really special way not only to lead into the movie, uh, but just to thank you guys for sticking with me throughout this whole project. Uh, when I first decided to review every single Sopranos episode, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to finish it before the film came out. And I had no idea that, you know, your reaction to this would be so positive that you guys would enjoy the videos and keep watching them week after week. So thank you guys so much. This is for you. And I cannot wait to finish this series with you guys. Hopefully everything works out and neither HBO or YouTube fucks with me and prevents any of my uploads. Um, but if everything goes smoothly, there'll be a new video every single day in September. So get ready for that coming up. But without further ado, let's get into the episode. This is White Caps. Tony takes Carmela down to the shore to see a house, um, and he proposes they buy this house, um, it's called White Caps, as a gift for the family. It'll be something that they can go to for family vacations and keep the family close together. Um, for once, Tony is actually, you know, thinking about, you know, being close with his family. And Carmela is at first reluctant, but then she gets really excited about the house. She even pressures Tony to buy it nonchalantly, you know, just suggesting that he buy it, even though it's very clear that she really wants it. Um, so they make an offer on the house, and it seems like they're going to get it. Uh, meanwhile, Christopher gets out of rehab. He's clean, healthy, and sober now, um, and he looks a lot better than he did. He drives Tony to meet with uh, Johnny Sack, and Johnny wants Tony to uh, kill Carmine Sr., as they discussed last episode. This will allow him to step up as boss, and as boss, he can make it rewarding for Tony. Now, Tony demands, you know, really good deal for this uh, assassination. He wants, you know, no part of his HUD business taken by New York, and then 60-40 split on all their construction projects moving forward. So this is going to net him a lot of money. Johnny Sack agrees because, again, he wants to be boss, and he's tired of taking orders from Carmine Sr. Um, so they agree to do the hit, and Tony has Christopher hire two drug dealers that he knows um, to do the hit so that it doesn't lead back to any of the, you know, mobsters. Things are looking pretty good for a while, but then Irina calls the house, and she talks to Carmela. Um, she tells Carmela that not only was she sleeping with Tony, Tony actually slept with her cousin Svetlana. Now, Carmela knows Svetlana from when she took care of Tony's mother, and this really upsets her. So when Tony gets home, he sees that Carmela is throwing his stuff out of the window, and she demands that he, you know, get out of the house and get out of her life. She's really, really upset. She's hysterical by this. Not only just because Tony was cheating, I mean, she knew always that Tony was cheating, but one, that Tony cheated with a woman that Carmela knew and liked, and also, this happened to just coincide with the fact that, you know, Furio left and she was already really upset by that and she was sick. Um, so it just really set things over the edge. And that's why Carmela's really freaking out about this. 
there's a funny detail where she says that you know she put the nail that she found in Tony's pants on the dresser and she now thinks that the nail is from Svetlana and you can see on Tony's face that he's about to say that no that wasn't from Svetlana but he know he realizes that by saying that he'd be admitting that he was sleeping with another woman on top of Svetlana so it's actually worse than Carmela thinks so he can't say anything but that look on his face is just really funny. Tony leaves the house and goes to confront Irina. Um, he finds Svetlana there. She tells him that the nurse that saw him sleep with her at Junior's house told Irina to get back at Svetlana because they had a dispute over her paycheck. Um, Irina called uh, the house because she broke up with Zelman. Um, after Tony beat Zelman with the belt, uh, he couldn't get it up with her anymore because he felt weak. So it led to their breakup. So it's really funny that, you know, these actions that Tony does always come back to haunt him, even in ways he didn't expect. You know, he shouldn't have beat Zelman like that. One, because they're business partners, but then also, two, it kept Arena out of his life. So he invited this danger back in by doing this. Um, but Tony just really can't control himself when it comes to these kind of things. With nowhere to go, Tony sleeps at the Whitecaps house. Uh, the owner, a guy named Alan Sappinsley, tells Tony that he can't stay there until he owns the place. Um, but Tony decides that uh, he doesn't want to buy the house anymore because it's looking like, you know, he might even get divorced with Carmela. Alan, however, refuses to give the deposit back. Some fans have noticed a, a similarity in the initials Alan Sappinsley and Anthony Soprano, suggesting that these two characters, you know, really are the same type of person. You know, they're both business, captain of industry types. Um, but Tony's on one side of the law and Alan is a lawyer on the other side of the law. But they're both, you know, looking out for their business interests. Um, in order to force him to basically hand the deposit back, Tony sends his boat down there with his speakers and he plays loud music in front of this guy's house. And it basically annoys them to the point where um, he has no choice but to agree to return the deposit. Uh, meanwhile, Carmine Sr. agrees to settle in the um, HUD dispute. At the meeting, uh, he demands uh, 20% instead of the 40 he wanted originally. Um, but Tony looks at Johnny Sack, and Johnny Sack gives a signal. You know, he lowers his eyes. And I think this is a signal to Tony that Carmine will go lower. Uh, they reach a, a, you know, a conclusion, though, at this negotiation. And the Esplanade project is brought back. So they're going to start making money again. Uh, with no conflict, though, to motivate him... Uh, Tony decides to back out of the agreement with John. Uh, Johnny Sack is really pissed off by this because, you know, he doesn't want to take orders from Carmine anymore. He's pissed off at how Carmine treated him over the comments about his wife, Ginny. Um, and he leaves angry. And there's this, this tension between Tony and John at the end of this episode. Tony later has uh, Christopher kill the two um, drug dealers that he hired for this job because he never wants this information to get out. And there's an interesting detail, which is that uh, one of the drug dealers mentions that not to tell his girlfriend or wife or whatever, ex-wife, about the money that they were going to earn off this deal because, you know, she'll be looking for child support money. And the woman's name is Kaisha. That's later the name of the imaginary black girlfriend that Christopher tells Tony in the episode Kaisha. So funny detail there. Tony moves into the pool house at his house. Um, he can't stay in the main house with Carmela there, so he moves into there. Uh, he and Carmela get into this really big argument. It's one of the best scenes in the show, one of the best pieces of acting. Um, James Gandolfini and Edie Falco both won Emmys for this uh, performance. Um, but they both argue about, you know, what led them to this point. Tony says that Carmela knew what kind of man he was when she married him. Carmela finally admits that, you know, she's been in love with Furio this whole time. And when Tony hears this, he almost hits her. He, he rushes her and he's about to hit her, but instead he puts his fist in the wall. And instead he ends up using his mother's line. He says, oh, poor you. So again, he always comes back to that eventually, that we can see the shadow of the mother still hanging over Tony's life like this, making him a miserable person. At Junior's uh, trial, they are unable to reach a verdict because the guys intimidated one of the jurors and he refuses to convict him. Eventually, this ends in a mistrial and Junior is set free. Um, but he's still, you know, broke and powerless. So he's not too happy at the end of the episode. He's just 
gotten out of one conflict, but he still has a lot more on the horizon. Um, he sees Bobby being romantic with Janice, though. He's, like, dancing with her. And then he makes up an excuse to get Bobby to, you know, leave Janice right there. Um, because he's trying to protect Bobby from Janice. He knows what kind of person she is, and he doesn't want him involved with her. You know, he said this before to, to Bobby, but Bobby has not taken the advice. But he should. Um, at the end of the episode, though, Tony decides to move out from the house. Um, he thinks it's no good, the conflict between the two of them living there. Um, you know, he has this, like, tearful goodbye with his children. Meadow, in particular, is kind of realizing how immature she was all this time. And this is kind of the first step on her becoming a more mature, you know, woman. Um, but that is the episode Whitecaps. Really one of the best. Um, but thank you guys so much for watching. It really means so much to me that you guys watch season after season of these Soprano Logs. And I'm really excited about these Sopranos Timber coming up. Um, I hope you guys are excited. Make sure to share that info. I want to get a lot of watchers this season. But stay tuned for that coming up soon. Thanks. No joke this time, I seriously just want to thank my patrons for supporting me and helping me to continue to make these videos for you all to enjoy. Hunter, Tommy Smith, Abdallah Alamari, George Jones, Russell, Sean, Graham, Rooftop, Rico Bellic, Heart of Markness, Broccoli, Isaiah, Placenta Juan, Logan, and Clean. Thank you guys so much, you are truly, truly amazing.